Hello, everybody. Mike from Southern California again. It's Friday, April the 3rd, 2020, and you're on the mic. So I've got a question for you. Do you think it's time to file an antitrust lawsuit against Funimation? You know, I was thinking about that yesterday when I was watching um, a, a story that Yellow Flash and um, Hero Hay had covered in which now what we're hearing is Funimation's now sitting on production committees over in Japan now. You know, they're being brought in, um, they're being brought in to help cover the cost of, you know, certain anime productions. There's, of course, been concern about the possibility that they'll try to influence the work over there since more of the money is coming from the western markets for anime um that they might try to influence them into making the quote-unquote woke agenda type stuff that a lot of us have been decrying um you know as i've always said there's other anime comp there's other dub companies like sentai filmworks in houston Media Blasters and Headline Sound Studios in New York, Ocean Studios up in Canada, and out here in California with Viz Media up in San Francisco, and um, Bang Zoom in LA, you know, where we don't have to just rely strictly on Funimation. Funimation has grown and come a pretty powerful, I mean, make no mistake, they're right now are the biggest dog in the fight right now, okay? But they don't have to remain there, especially with the way they're treated their fans the way they you know the way they've tried to kind of push their agenda on a lot of stuff we've heard about how they'll like alter scripts push certain agendas um so yeah so you know one of the things you need to do is to you know try to get people to um try to get people to contact those Japanese companies and say, look, you know, this, you know, don't let them fool you because they're going to look to alter your work. Uh, slowly, but surely over time, Funimation has tried to push out other dub companies. You know, now they have a lot of influence on the convention circuit as well. Where you do at a lot of conventions have more, you know, more Funimation VAs, you know, people want the Dragon Ball VAs. That's part of the reason why, you know, with with um, Funimation currently holding the license, um, even despite the little the little outtakes we got last year. Um, so yeah, so you just have to wonder though if maybe. Funimation is getting too much power to where maybe it's about time you can cons we consider filing an antitrust lawsuit against them. You know, force them to be broken up. You know, to force a company to close because um, they're becoming too big within the anime industry. That's just something to take into consideration. Um, you know, we, as I said, the whole point of the reason I'm bringing this up, because now you hear about, we've heard that it's been going on for a while, too, because they did it with Dimension W, Fire Force. Now, mind you, you know, Funimation's not necessarily the only company that's ever done this, where they co-produce stuff, you know, abroad. You know, um, the second season of Big O was co-produced by Adult Swim. They co-produced it with Sunrise. You know, and part of the reason is is because then they can say that they, they since they partly own it, they can do whatever they want with it, you know, um, theoretically. Um, but one of the biggest concerns is, of course, they'll try to put the, the woke agenda in there, and then it won't be anime anymore. It won't be the anime that many of us as fans have come to come to love and be appreciative of. Instead, we'll get a lot of this, you know, woke 
SJW garbage like like they're doing in, in Marvel and DC right now. I'm sure many of you've heard the about the New Warriors comic and Gotham High comic just totally just particularly the Gotham High comic was just was just taking just totally just totally trashing on you know the Batman continuity. Kind of now some people argue it could be looked at as an Elf World story, which is true. But a lot of people are just tired of I think we've been hearing this the last two, three, four, five years, that people are just tired of all this SJW and woke garbage coming into our entertainment. You know, pushing an agenda people are rejecting the agenda. They're not embracing it, they're rejecting it. You know, trying to force it down somebody's throat is just gonna get you not get you knocked out. You know, figuratively, because we know that this stuff doesn't sell. I mean, look at some of the stuff they try to pull on some of like Batwoman, you know, the Batwoman um television series, Supergirl. A lot of this stuff is getting like you know, getting shellacked, you know. You know, so. But anyways, I think that's about as much on that that I, w that I will comment on for now. Um, so let's look at some happier stuff. Take a look back through history a bit and take a look at some stuff that is more, um, more appealing. The history report. Okay, so first off. Um, first off, on this date in 1991, the first, the first entry of the Eldrin series, anim, you know, anime series, Masses Raijin O, debuted, um, debuted in Japan on this date in, um, you know, on this date in, um, in 1991, on this date, 1991, the first anime series based off the Elden series, Matchless Raijin O, um, would make its debut on this date, 1991. So, moving forward in time a bit here. On this date in 2002, um, the 20th issue of Archie's Weird Mysteries, released by Archie Pub Archie Comics Publishing, um, would would um would would be released on the newsstand. So on this date in two thousand two, um the twentieth issue of Archie's Word Mystery, which of course at the time was also um was also a cartoon around this time as well. So um but on this date in two thousand two, Archie's Word Mystery num Word Mysteries number twenty would would be released on this date. And on this date in 2005 was WrestleMania 21. In the main event of WrestleMania 21, Batista beat Triple H for the World Heavyweight Championship. Along along with that, among some of the other um, matches that would go on would include um, John Cena beating JBL for the WWE Championship, Aki Bono beating Big Show in a sumo match, um, Trish, Str uh, Tr Trish Stratus uh, um, retaining her um, her women's championship against Christy Hemme, um, Edge winning the Money in the Bank match, um, defeating Chris Jericho, Shelton Benjamin, Christian, Chris Benoit, and Kane. Um, also, you had you know, and you had Undertaker extend his WrestleMania streak to I think twenty one and zero at this point. So on this date in two thousand five was WrestleMania twenty one. And with all that now, with all that now, if you like the, um, okay, so if you want to check the links below, my, you know, you want to contact me directly, you can DM me on my Discord. 
Um, you can check out the Discord um, and join if you'd like. I'm also promoting a bunch of different dub companies. I'm also still promoting the GoFundMes. As always, guys, never feel like you have to donate. If it's on your heart to do so and you have the means to do so, please consider donating. If you've already donated before, please consider donating again. And if you um, cannot donate, you can still help out the cause by sharing, sharing the link. Because after all, sharing is caring. You never know. Maybe somebody in your circle of friends may, may want to help out. You never know. And if you like this content, please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. I always look forward to the conversation with you guys as long as it's civil and respectful. Um, let me see. Um, I will usually get back to you right away or as soon as I can. Um, and with that, don't forget, with today being Friday, it's... Um, Tonight at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern, will be Voices Big and Small. This week, I'm doing Tyler Galindo of Houston. Hopefully, I see you guys there. Um, and if not, I'll see you on Monday. Bye.